Thank you. Can I check that everybody can see me on screen? Excellent, thank you. So my name is Nicholas, Nicholas here. That's my side name, I'm the Vice President for Victoria. So uh, hopefully I won't go on too long and take too much of your time. I'll go through the various points and we'll cover off on it. You can be wrong because you would have received that documentation a week or two ago in relation to the various changes that we're wanting to propose for a new constitution. So you may be wondering why I'm looking at tweaking our kind of constitution. This is because it is uh, quite outdated. I think the last time it was reviewed was back in 2011. So that's a long time. Secondly, the objectives are also outdated. They haven't been reviewed in terms of what has been achieved, the various outcomes it has uh, consisted as it has done so in the past. Because of the significant changes this year, it's made it very difficult about what we can actually do. We'll talk about the members of the membership structure because that's uh, another topic we can cover off on. We do have a committee that's been established to review the constitution. Through that process, we want to ensure that there's various outcomes that we can achieve to ensure that we can make these changes. If we do that now, it means that years into the future we don't need to review and go through this voting process. So, as you can imagine, it's a huge task for the committee uh, to work on, and it's been quite a lot of effort involved in various areas this year. The first aspect I'd like to talk about is the regulation. So that means the Constitution follows the current moral rules from the Consumer Affairs Victoria, their moral rules, which is a little bit different because they have a new update and what will have decided that in the current Constitution, if we look at those various points and aspects, we work with a new template, which is simple to read and assist the board and the staff members in understanding what Deaf Victoria does and what we wish to achieve. The purpose and the objectives. So looking at the purpose and the objectives, the new model of rules uh, are actually not going to be change because it's the same as the objectives and very similar. It's a similar function. So we plan to remove the purpose and incorporate that with the new objectives. Thirdly, the membership structure. So we want to ensure that it's strong, robust, deaf-centric, and we'll go into further detail a little later on. The regulations, the bottom rules, there's a recommendation that you have a member of five members in your organisation. So with the template, what we plan to do is look at the old constitution and use certain excerpts from that to include in the template. The new constitution will have a minimum of five members. You might wonder why we are seeking that. And that is because if we lose members for whatever reason, it could actually stop the organisation from functioning without any accountability. Uh, and that means that we would continue without uh, members of other sites that can have a critical impact on the organisation and also give people in the community. So uh, the minimum member count is The purpose and objectives, again, first of all, we talk about removing the purpose and then incorporating into the objectives. First of all, rules don't have the, the purpose, they don't have the objectives, so we'll be guided by the moral rules template. The objectives we've tried to narrow down to aid to increase the 
and they're much more succinct and focused, which means that later on, hopefully, it's easier for us to obtain funding that match up with our key objectives. Next, I'll go through each of the new objectives, and I won't repeat all the, the old ones, because you would have had those documents sent out to you previously. The purpose, again, becomes an objective. The new statement there is to ensure that deaf and hard of hearing people can participate fully in all areas, economically, socially, and through employment life throughout Victoria. Second, to represent and advocate for deaf and hard of hearing people in Victoria through their human rights. And also to be a state state member body of a national Greek deaf organisation. Sorry, I'm no, just dealing with the PowerPoint. And that explains clearly around why Deaf Australia is not used there. So we're using language that's guided uh, constitutions and that's to assist us. If by any case, if Australia decides to change their brand or their name of their organisation, it would mean that we need to call another AGM and have to call for a change of one objective. We really don't want to do that. So to save time, we're just tweaking the language and we know that Deaf Australia is our national uh, representative organisation. So again, it's not changing dramatically, we're just to uh, changing the wording. Again, to ensure that deaf and hard of hearing people can connect with each other as deaf individuals, with their local community and workplaces. The fifth item is to promote Auslan Australian Sign Language as the valued and preferred language of deaf Victorians and ensure accurate representation in the broader community in their language also. Six, to promote the creation of safe support, supportive spaces for deaf and hard of hearing people in line with international deaf space principles. Seven, to support the adoption of inclusive, non-discriminatory policies and practices by Victorian government departments, service providers, community organisations, and the last one, number eight, is to work collaboratively with peak representing bodies to advance deaf Victoria's objectives. And as you can see, all those objectives, the main reason why we're tweaking the language and making it more succinct is the people are clear on the link behind those objectives. Here you'll see three objectives on the screen. So just because we're removing them doesn't mean that we are not oblivious to those aspects being incorporated into one of the eight objectives that I mentioned before, just to be clear. Is the better purpose we're looking at has 10 objectives. So instead of having 11 key aspects, we narrowed it down to 8 to support us with our statement and achieve of objectives. 
So the purpose and objective of this was uh, the key point. The next item I'll talk about is membership. The reason why we were looking at the membership structure was because, again, it was unclear. There were many unwritten rules. And as deaf people, we often talk to one another about them when we know what they mean. But documented on paper, it's been unclear. So legally, we need to be able to identify what we have documented. Paper, ensure that the practices of the past that have been unwritten need to be written and documented in our documentation here in Victoria so that we do follow our constitution and our legal requirements. So, going through the changes, all up is about 15 changes, and I'll just go through those quickly. Hopefully, I don't send you to sleep. So first of all, we've got the definition of a deaf person. So a person who has hearing loss. Again, that's a very vague term. That can mean somebody who joins Deaf Victoria with some form of hearing loss uh, from the impacts of industrial noise from the workplace, which is not necessarily appropriate. So we clearly want to try to identify what deaf means. And that definition is from Deaf Australia and their constitution, including any person with a hearing loss who uses Auslan. And you'll see the capital D to denote Deaf, which means we're talking about a Deaf community member, a person who identifies with Auslan and part of the Deaf culture. Part of hearing that definition didn't exist in the constitution, so we've added that in. Referring to any persons with a hearing loss usually acquired after the person has acquired a spoken language. So usually their communication preference would be to use spoken English. And again, that's been adopted to be part of our constitution. Full-time students and pension members structure. We decided to take this aspect out because it wasn't required. And historically, uh, it's not been an issue and we already have a fee that's clearly defined. On the screen, you can see the word associated, which usually talks about a hearing member who might be an associated Normal language that's used in the Constitution, uh, Constitution to BC, when they refer to this, which we have had there as an associate member, we have tweaked to become an affiliated member. And again, we're just going by the language that is used out there that's more consistent across the various constitutions. The old Constitution, or the current Constitution at the moment, if you like, doesn't have an affiliated member or organisation listed so on those terms used. Generally, they're the sport members, which is an organisation to the very 51% of different members on their board. So, this means that affiliated can be an organisation with less than 51% of different members on their board. They can simply join and share their support to Victoria. However, an affiliated member is talking about an individual member and an affiliated member organisation doesn't have voting rights. In our constitution, we're already aware that if you want to be a member of Deputy Victoria, you need to live in the state of Victoria. You need to have an address where you reside. Constitution, there's no mention of that. So it means that a 
person from the Territory of Western Australia or Queensland could join as a member. And really, our key focus is the state of Victoria. So we've made the amendment to say that ordinary and affiliated members must need and reside in the state of Victoria. And I mentioned this previously, talking about the national peak representative organisations, tweaking the language through the various objectives. Diff Australia has become the national peak representative organisation. WFD, World Federation of the Deaf, we tweak that to be the international deaf peak organisation. And again, further clarity around the wording choices to ensure that we are consistent so that we don't need to make further changes if those organisations change their names in the future, such as Deaf Australia or World Federation for the Deaf, where we don't need to call a extraordinary regime to make these changes. The membership, well, the is one and one new membership, so you come straight to Deaf Victoria uh, now, not through any other organisations. We generally offer a one year annual membership. And we found that the administrative burden can be quite a struggle in terms of dealing with our members, so we found a more consistent way of offering a five year membership. So when you do join as a member, you'll be offered a five year membership. The fee will be the same. Five dollars a year. Sorry, my apologies, that will increase to twenty-five dollars a year. However, it is the, the same amount that you'll pay. Five dollars per year over five years, so you're just paying more up front, twenty-five dollars for a five year membership. The current constitution says that you need to pay the membership prior to the thirtieth of June for the following financial year. And we've tweaked that, so it means that you can pay 30 days before, prior to the age year. For the membership past the financial year. And this assists us, and uh, we're looking particularly at new members. You need to be a member of Deaf Victoria before you can join the board. <coughs> And if you're not a member, you can't actually ask to be a member of the board unless you're an existing member of the organisation. So that's how we've uh, dealt with the queries that come through around applications to the board. Office bearers, again, uh, that's been an unwritten rule around office bearers. So the president, the vice president, the treasurer, the secretary, we've not always known whether these people have had to be dead from the board. I mean, we've always said that and stated that, but it's not been documented anyway. So we need to ensure that it is documented in our constitution to say that you need to be deaf to be on the board. And an ordinary member, but definitely not. The ratio, I know previously it was 80 percent we couldn't have more than 20 percent of members being here and the 24 to 8 members on the board so we decided to remove those aspects in the new model focus on the board structure being a minimum of four ordinary members so different members and if required, we can add up to two affiliated members on the board, so hearing members. Altogether, there's a maximum of 10 members on the board. And again, having four to 10 members on the board. So up to 10 up to two hearing members on the board. Then not. 
the last point, I hope you're still awake and not falling asleep. This clause in our current constitution only talks about ordinary members on the board. So when you're on the board, you have a two year term. If there is a vacancy, there's some information that talks about how we seek out new members. And the constitution at the moment, it only applies for deaf members. So it means that hearing members can potentially stay on for six months, one year, two years. There's no term limitation if you are on hearing members. So we've highlighted those uh, sections on the slide and we'll see the changes that we look to add. So having affiliated added to that particular section. Okay, so I, I've come to an end with all those various amendments and changes. Does anybody have any questions around the proposed constitution changes? We'll just allow a maximum of two questions at this point. If you have a question, please do uh, ask that on the Q and A through Zoom. Any questions, Kate? Okay, I'll just check. Uh, Robert, um, did you want your question flagged? Just double checking if the Zoom is working. Robert, we can see us from here, Robert. If we didn't get Robert on the camera, that'd be Wait, so we're able to have Robert spotlighted. It looks as though we don't have any questions. No questions. Okay. I hope that means that everybody understood those constitutional amendments and changes. It was quite a lot. We do have one more minute if anybody would like to ask any questions. But it looks as though everybody understood those changes and hopefully agree upon those. We will be moving a motion for those uh, proposed amendments to be accepted shortly. Sam Cartridge has moved a motion for the proposed amended constitution and also Ryan Rwanda who seconded that motion. So we'll put it off for a vote and we'd just like to remind everybody the constitutional change means over 75% of votes to have it passed. Previous phase of maybe fifty percent, but in the current environment will require seventy five percent to work on this motion. So we do need everybody to vote if you abstain. That's okay, but we would prefer that you do vote on this proposed motion. 
The third poll is live. We have three options. First of all, to approve the motion. Secondly, to reject the motion. And thirdly, to abstain. And the voting line is open here. Last few individuals, could you please bring a vaccine? Thanks, ladies. 